and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your English and take it to the next level. And we're just going to echo off the video that I made a couple of weeks ago about the words that you should not use and the alternatives that you can use. If you haven't seen that yet, click on the card. I highly recommend you do. I received so many messages from different people asking me to help them expand their vocabulary and replace boring words with interesting words. So that is what we're going to do today. But before we get started, I would just like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Lingoda, who are bringing you an amazing opportunity to improve your language skills even further. It's the Lingoda Language Marathon. The marathon is basically an opportunity to take one class per day for three months and get 100% of your money back. So essentially, you can get $800 worth of language classes for free. If you've not heard of Lingoda before, it is an online language academy which offers super high quality group and private lessons with native qualified teachers. You can also do a half marathon, taking 15 classes per month for three months, and then you can get 50% of your money back upon completion. You have to participate in an agreed number of group classes per month in order to succeed. The languages available are English, German, Spanish, French, and business English, which is one that really, really interests me because I know a lot of you have a higher level and you do need the B1 for business English. And this is really gonna help you with presentations, finding a job, job interviews, hosting meetings. It's seriously such a useful course. The marathon runs from the 1st of October to the 31st of December, and you have until the 21st of September to sign up. Places are limited, so make sure you secure yours to avoid disappointment. So each month, for three months, you'll pay the fee, but if you successfully finish the marathon, you get your money back. If you are interested and ready to participate in the language marathon and improve your language skills for the better, click on the link in my description box and use the code there for a four euro 50 discount off the entrance fee. Or if you would like more information about the marathon, I go into much further detail in my original announcement video, which is also linked in the description box. I think the language marathon is the perfect solution for finding the motivation to do three months of intensive learning and to really take your language skills to the next level. You're essentially competing against yourself. Right, let's get on with the lesson. Okay, so in a previous video, I spoke about the words that you should never use in English. And I want to expand on that today. I'm going to talk about some common words that could be considered quite boring and some alternatives that you can use. Basically, this is just a really jam-packed, jam-packed means it's really, really full, a really jam-packed vocabulary video. So get your notepads out, you're going to want to take notes. Now, the first word is smart. I want to mention this word because in British English, it means something slightly different than in American English. In American English, smart refers to intelligence. If somebody is smart, they are intelligent. In British English, it's not so clear. You have to add a bit of context because if I say someone is smart, you would think that they are well-dressed or well-turned out. If I say he's a very smart man, I'm referring to the way he looks, not to the way he thinks. So I'm going to give you some alternative words for smart and intelligent that you can use in everyday English. Some of the alternatives need a bit more explanation because they mean something slightly different. They're not just synonyms. So instead of saying smart, we can say knowledgeable, somebody who has a lot of knowledge. We can say brilliant. Now you might know brilliant as being really, really good or great, that's brilliant. But if you describe a person as brilliant, it can mean that they're really, really clever. I think you would describe Dumbledore as brilliant because he was just this genius. I always like to get in a Harry Potter reference. <laughs> Another word similar to brilliant is gifted. If somebody is gifted, it means they are very skilled in a particular area often referring to their intelligence. When I was at school, there was a special list that you could be on uh, that was called the gifted and talented list. And it was a list of students that were very talented or very intelligent. And they, <laughs> the people on the list got to go off and do special activities. Now I think of that, I think that's, that is dreadful. That's just, that is dreadful. Yeah, I hope that doesn't occur anymore. Another word we can use is witty. And witty, it means funny and intelligent. 
So someone who's funny might make a lot of jokes, but they're not particularly intelligent jokes. And somebody witty makes a lot of very intelligent jokes. They play with the language, they use historical facts. Somebody who I think is very witty is Stephen Fry. I always mention Stephen Fry and Harry Potter in my videos. You can tell what I watch in my spare time. So if somebody says something very intelligent and very funny, you can say, that was very witty of you. It's a lovely word. Along the same lines, quick-witted. This means that somebody can come up with an intelligent or funny response very, very quickly. I, on the other hand, take a little bit longer to process information. Another lovely word is sharp. If someone's sharp, they're quick. They're intelligent. It's hard to trick them because they spot everything. Then we have wise. And wise tends to mean that you are intelligent due to experience. You've got a lot of experience. You can refer to your experience. You're wise. We often refer to older intelligent people as wise. We've also got brainy. And this kind of refers to somebody who's quite studious somebody who lives a very academic life. I wouldn't say it's the biggest compliment. Well, it is a compliment to be called brainy because you're being told that you're intelligent, but I think this word can be used with a negative undertone, sort of in the same way as geek or nerd, somebody who studies a lot and maybe doesn't have such a big social life. Nothing wrong with that, but be careful who you use it with because you could offend them. Now that's enough of these smart alternatives. As with all of these topics, please do contribute your ideas in the comments section below. I was so amazed at your contributions in my words you should not say video. You guys are smart. Oh no, that's what we're meant to not say. All right, let's have a look at a very common word now. Good. <laughs> good is a good word. Good is a good word. It's a good word. I can't take that away from the word good. However, there are better words. I remember when I was teaching students, I used to get so like self-conscious of repeating the word good over and over again after every answer. Good, 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 very good. <laughs> um, so I had to come up with alternatives and I ended up just saying wonderful the whole time and then my students used to predict what I was gonna say and they'd say wonderful <laughs> and I was about to say it and it was so embarrassing but I'm gonna give you some really good alternatives to good right now. See, it's not good if you repeat it all over and over again. Oh my God, I said it again. <laughs> okay, let's just get on with this. One of my favorite ones is marvelous. Oh. Isn't marvellous just such a lovely word? Marvellous! It makes you sound really quite posh and well-spoken. I would use it at every opportunity. Another one which I love seeing in my comments section because I know that you guys have done your research on alternatives for good is superb. And this is another posh word. This meal is superb. Not super, it's got a B on the end superb and it just means the absolute best. Another word is exquisite and this is another word for very very good and we often use it to describe food or drink. A waiter comes over to your table, how was the wine? Oh exquisite, very very posh. Another that I really like is delightful. If something's delightful it gives you a lot of delight which means happiness. The show was absolutely delightful, it was very happy, it was very warm, it was very good. <laughs> terrific. Be careful on the pronunciation of this one. It's not terrific, it's terrific. Make sure you don't confuse this with terror, which means something's very scary. Terrific is a very, very positive word. Another one is splendid. If something is splendid, it's top notch. It's absolutely excellent. I think splendid and marvelous are my favorites in this list. But what if something is really bad? Well, don't worry, I've got a list for you. Now there's an unwritten rule in English. If you use a posh word meaning bad, you have to show absolute disgust whilst using these words. So we have atrocious. We also have obscene, obscene. <laughs> we have dreadful, <laughs> dreadful. I hope you're all practicing at home practicing your disgusted faces. Disgusting, disgusting, despicable, absolutely despicable, vile. Ah, oh, that's one I use a lot. Ugh, vile, that is absolutely vile. Nasty, 
Ugh, nasty. Evil. Just pure evil. Brutal. You can have a brutal murder, which is the worst of the worst. Lots of blood and gore. And, possibly the best one, abhorrent. Abhorrent. If you use that in an essay, I'm sure it will go down well, if used in the right context. Because it's not such a common word, but it's a really effective one. Now, how about some alternatives for verbs? What about ran or to run? You could say someone jogged, which is a light run. You could say somebody sped or they sped off. That means they went at quite a pace, they went quickly. The same for bolted and darted. And if you use off, darted off, bolted off, sped off, it means that they are going away from you. Scurried, that's running quickly with little footsteps. Galloped, the same, but with big footsteps like a horse. Raced, dashed, both really quick. And sprinted, more like Usain Bolt, possibly the fastest of them all. And then on the other hand, we have alternatives for walked, to walk. You could saunter, which is just to kind of aimlessly walk, saunter along. Or you could march, which is to walk meaningfully. To trudge somewhere, that's to kind of drag your feet like you don't want to go. To stagger, how you might walk after you've had a drink. If you're not picking up your feet, you might trip over. You can amble or you can stroll, and that's just a leisurely walk. I do actually say, I'm just going out for a stroll, um, which just means a, an aimless walk with no objective. I'm just enjoying being outside for a minute. Another verb we can find alternatives for is to see. You can say you glimpsed something, which means you just got a really quick look. Equally, you can say you glanced at something, and you must use it with the preposition at to glance at. I glanced at her answers and saw that she'd got them all wrong. To gaze or to gaze at someone. This is to look at something for a very long time. It almost implies to look lovingly at something. If I say he gazed into her eyes, it means he looked lovingly or looked for a long time into her eyes. I'm gazing into the camera lens right now at all of you students because I love you so much. To spot. You can spot something. That means you've, you've seen something or you've noticed it. To notice. It means you've found something that you weren't necessarily looking for. You can examine something, which is to study it long and hard, to really look at the details. And you can also eye something. And to eye something is to really study, move your eyes all along it. And you, if you eye someone up, it means you're almost looking at them flirtatiously. You're really looking at their body and seeing what they're like. It's not necessarily a positive thing. And the last topic is alternatives for saying scared. Scared is a perfectly fine word, but if you're writing about something particularly scary, then you can find yourself repeating it over and over again. So here are some alternatives. One you might know already is afraid. You are scared, you are afraid. It's pretty much the same thing. The same goes for frightened, to be frightened. One that's slightly different is startled, and this means that something's made you jump, it's shocked you in the moment, maybe somebody's just appeared, and you go, oh, and you've been startled. The same goes for spooked, to spook someone, to suddenly make them scared. Now, what if you are really, really scared? You might be petrified, absolutely petrified, or terrified, not to be confused with terrific, after a scare, you could be really shaken, and that means that you, you, know, you don't feel right. This is sort of the aftershock of a scare. To be anxious, you could be really nervous and anxious. You could also be horrified or, good word coming here, aghast, aghast. And this is just to be filled with fear and shock. Right. That is it for today's lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it. If you would like more lessons like this one, please comment down below because I always use your requests as my inspiration for future videos. That's why I made this one because you guys seem to like the other one so much. 
and there are loads more alternatives that I can give you and I think it's just so much nicer than reading them from a page, having somebody explain them to you. Don't forget to check out the Lingoda Language Marathon, the link is in the description box along with the code and please do connect with me on all of my social media, I've got my Facebook, I've got my Instagram and I've got my Twitter and I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah! So in a previous video I spoke, I spoke, English teacher. Right, that's enough of the smart words. With all of these topics, I would love for you to contribute in the description box, not in the description box, don't touch my description box, that's mine. You can go in the comment box, okay. Just holding my imaginary mind.